Hi, and welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to show you a project I'm working on right now. Uh, it's uh, been in progress for quite a while, and I'm finally getting to the point where I've got all the pieces to make it happen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to achieve a childhood dream, and I'm going to take a 10D Color Computer 3, and I'm going to put it in an IBM PC case. And actually, this is a uh, IBM 5155 portable PC, which is a pretty rare machine, but uh, quite cool for the purpose that I want. When I was a kid with my Coco 3, uh, one thing that always drove me crazy is that when you plug in a disc controller, you plug in all your accessories, you've got wires all over the place, and the keyboard is stuck to the main unit, so you can't move it around at all. Uh, and I think, you know, ever since I was like 15 years old, I wanted to put um, a Coco 3 into like an IBM PC case or something. And actually I did do that and I had it uh, um, installed in a, uh, a large PC case for about 15 years or so. Uh, this thing was non-working, so it was a good uh, uh, computer to use. And um, basically it'll give me a monitor built in, a couple of spaces for disk drives, remote keyboard and uh, the ability to lug it about as needed which will uh, accomplish my goals of what I want with the uh, Coco 3. What I'm going to do is I'll be popping the motherboard from this unit into this computer and I'm just going to show you today how I'm going to accomplish that. I'm not going to actually do it right now but I'll show you how it's going to going to happen and I'll, I'll show you what's involved. So the 5155 has a classic IBM keyboard with a nice clicky feel to it. Uh, it is very similar to the original IBM PC keyboard with the small enter key and whatnot, but it's a slightly different layout, a little bit more compact than even the uh, 5150 keyboard. It has a uh, serial cable here uh, with a phone connector on it, telephone connector. The output on this is, you know, it's a standard, I think, 1200 baud serial. Uh, I'm going to use an Arduino to decode the serial signal and convert it into something that the uh, Coco will understand. The uh, case is pretty easy to take apart. Slide it out. You can see it's going to come out there. Looking at this side, the high voltage section is on this side. Uh, so you have the monitor, the CRT, and the uh, driver board underneath that for it. Nice thing about the monitor, and the reason why the 5155 works really good for this purpose, is that it is a 12 volt power supply. So it is stepped up to you know 2,000 volts that the CRT uses but the source voltage is 12 volts and that makes it quite easy to interface. Uh, the second thing that's great about this uh, monitor is that it is a composite input monitor. Um, IBM sort of cheaped out when they built the 5155 and while a lot of uh, other computers at the time were using custom digital drivers for the CRT, IBM went with an off-the-shelf composite driver uh, and they just used a CGA card on the um, uh, motherboard here so that uh, it would be cheaper to produce. Great thing is, is that the Coco 3 has a composite out, which means I can pretty much just plug it right in. I've actually uh, wired up a, you know, a phone jack to the, to the uh, points on the board so that I could connect the uh, Coco 3 directly in and uh, it's ready to roll. On this side, we have the blank space where the motherboard from the IBM used to go. And it's a pretty good fit for the Coco motherboard. So I've got one here. I'll be able to pop it in there and keep it connected up there. So should work quite well. Got a little bit of space on each side. I'll be using a bit of a, a bus extender that I've made. Uh, this will connect into the uh, disc controller and allow it to, to be mounted in a remote location. I've left a little bit of PC board on this because I might put an Arduino there uh, to build a serial port or something else. Just gives me some space for future for little projects I can work on. Now if we look in the computer again, the disk controller, this is a Coco disk controller without a case. Disk controller is probably going to fit right here or I might be able to mount it to the side here. We'll see how it goes and there's something attached to this controller. I've, I've got an uh, HCX floppy drive emulator that I'll be using as its main drive, and then I'll put in a uh, double-sided floppy drive in one of the slots as the floppy. So when I got this machine, the uh, power supply was actually dead. Uh, I wanted to keep a stock look, and 
finding an exact power supply like this was pretty much impossible. So what I did is I replaced the internals of this thing with a couple of power supplies I bought off uh, eBay, just uh, self-contained uh, power supplies and wired them up to the switch. So this is gonna be the most challenging part of the project because the keyboard is a serial signal and it will need to be converted into a digital signal that's compatible with a eight by eight matrix keyboard. Essentially the way that this works is that uh, the lines are I believe high and then they go low in sequence and by looking at the input lines you can determine which line has just gone low and then you can determine based on it being a grid what key has been pressed. So I need to make this connect up to that. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a little jumper board here and I've got a, a space for a 40 pin chip and the chip I'm going to use is an ATmega32 which is essentially an Arduino chip except with a whole bunch of pins. It's got I think 32 data lines which will give me enough to work with. I've also put in a couple of headers here so I can do some additional stuff in the future. The ATmega32 has got a lot more power than the whole Coco does uh, so I might as well use some of that functionality if I can. Another good thing about using a microcontroller in order to do the keyboard interface is I'll be able to set up macros for the function keys. So I'm probably going to set up some, you know, popularly used commands, dir, etc, etc. I'll put those on the function keys other than F1 and F2 because the Coco only had F1 and F2. As well, on the Coco keyboard, I, I talked about this in my other video, the 2 key has quotes above it. 2 key on a regular keyboard has an add above it. Uh, I'll be able to map this so it will use the regular keyboard mapping and that'll be pretty handy. And so just to show you that the uh, Coco will uh, drive this monitor, I've connected it up uh, with the HXE drive, virtual drive, and I've got a uh, quick directory listing there. Let's type cat again, let's get a directory and see it pulls it from the dirt. So this should be a neat little setup once it's done. Um, I hope you like my video and I hope you'll join me again for more uh, videos on technology, retro computing and programming. Thanks for watching.